Good morning, Griffin Church of God. Welcome to our service this morning. Welcome to this beautiful, sunshiny Memorial Day. We can tomorrow, but today it's raining. Um, this is a Memorial Day weekend. It's great because uh, because we, it's a time that we honor our servicemen and women that have uh, fallen for, to give us uh, liberty. It's also a time that we usually use to start summer. Um, so we're going to start this morning with uh, Brother Bob is going to present the, the flag to us. And we're going to say the Pledge of Allegiance. Brother Bob. Our usual flag bearer is on vacation this week, along with our pastor. Not the same place, but okay. Turn around. Let's no, 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 right here. Let's stand and let's let's do the pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty. Amen. Amen. We're going to start this morning now with a scripture reading and prayer. Good morning. This is from Psalm 92. I'm starting at verse 4. For you, Lord, have made me glad through your work. I will triumph in the works of your hands. O oh Lord, how great are your works! Your thoughts are very deep. <coughs> A senseless man does not know, nor does a fool understand this, when the wicked spring up like grass, and all the workers of iniquity flourish. It is that they may be destroyed forever, but you, Lord, are on high forevermore. Amen. Psalm 92. Amen. Dear Lord, we thank you that we've got this day, Lord, to come and to worship you. We thank you for every person here. We thank you for our weather, even though it's not sunshiny, we still gotta have the rain. Lord, we ask that you bless, bless each person here, bless people watching on Facebook, touch our pastor on his vacation, touch the ones that are missing from church because they're still on vacation. And Lord, just bless Bill this morning as he gives us the word. And, um, we love you, we praise you, we worship you. Yes, amen. We don't know what we would do without you, Lord. Lord, you're worthy. You're our leader, you're our, our guide, you're everything to Thanks. us. Lord God, just have your way in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 I had a rocky start this morning. I tried to start the computer, and uh, I would get it either on the computer or on the screen. I tried everything I know, but uh, it's, it's possessed today. But that's okay. Lord's there. We're going to have a great time in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Every 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. You want to see him today? I am so anxious to see my Lord and Savior in person. Not that I won't die, but I just think of all the great things he's done in our lives for each and every one of us. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. Bob, wherever are you at? Are you, can you come take offering for us? Thank you, praise team. Excellent job. Oh, we have a birthday. Tomorrow. So we're going to get to jump on her today. <laughs> um, Sharon, she's going to be 22 tomorrow. <laughs> service this morning. Uh, we had some technical difficulties today with the computer and, and uh, the screen not talking nice to each other. <coughs> so I hope we didn't mess anybody up by, by the songs we had. We've done these songs for a long time. Didn't have time to pronounce song sheets or anything. So, um, so apologize for the technical difficulty. Also had another one when my wife called in the middle of the <laughs> live here. Uh, but that, we got through that too, amen. Got a couple of announcements. June 5th to the 7th is the Indiana Camp Meeting. Uh, it's the River Life Church of God. Uh, the ladies are planning on going down and uh, Carol's going to have this here. You can have this here. What day is that? That's, that's Friday, right? Wilma, well, do you know what day that is? The latest thing? The 7th on a Friday. Okay. Um, some of the ladies are planning on going down for the luncheon on the 7th. Um, so, uh, if you're interested to see Carol when she gets here, um, or pick her, or let us know. July 9th through the 12th is Church of God General Assembly in Indiana, in Indianapolis Convention Center this year. So if you have a chance to get down here to the, to the assembly, I have never, ever, ever been to an assembly. I've been a minister in the Church of God for uh, probably 15, 20 years now, but I have never been to an assembly. So I'm thinking about maybe sneaking down there for a couple days just to see what it's like. Um, and that was the announcements for this morning. Our pastor is out of town. He's up down in Florida. Hopefully he's got sunshine and not rain like this. Because uh, he's at Disneyland with the, Disneyland, Disney World, whatever that one is, um, with his son. And uh, 
couple of grandkids too, I think. So we're hoping he has a great time. And yeah, Stephanie is in Niagara Falls right now on the Canada side. Yeah, Stephanie and, and, and Justy are on vacation right now too. Niagara Falls, how romantic. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully it's not raining there either. <laughs> So this morning is Memorial Day. Well, it's the day before Memorial Day. So I got to, got to thinking and praying, and I was thinking about sacrifice and victory. My first thought for today was just go with victory, because I was thinking about this really awesome thing going on in my life, and I thought, well, let's talk about victory. But then I talk, thought about the sacrifice that so many made for this country, and the sacrifice that Jesus made for our souls. So I'm going to be reading, bleh, if I can read and talk at the same time. I'm going to be reading out of Romans 13. My text is found on Romans 13, 1 through 7. If you're able to and would like to, uh, please stand for the reading of God's word. If not, you can, uh, you can stay seated. It goes like this. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. For there is no power but of God. Powers that be are ordained of God, whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth, resisteth the ordinance of God. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. For the rulers are not a terror to good works, but to, to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is the minister of God to thee for good, that thou do that which is evil, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is a minister of God, revenging the execute wrath upon him that doth evil. Wherefore you must needs be subject not only to, for wrath, but also for conscience' sake. For this is this cause, pay ye tribute also, for they are God's ministers attending continually upon this very thing. Render therefore to all their dues. Tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to him to whom honor. Father, I come to you this morning, Lord. Father, with a humble heart, thank you, Lord, for the, the things you've done in my life. I thank you, God, for the, the good times. I thank you, God, for the bad times, because the bad times have made me stronger. I pray, O oh God, this morning, Lord, that you reach out your hand. Touch this word, Lord. Anoint this word, Lord, in such a mighty, mighty way this morning. I pray that God you touch hearts and lives and souls. I ask God, the magnificent name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Memorial Day. We honor our veterans, mostly our fallen. We have veterans. We have a veteran in here today, don't we? Um, Sister, aren't you a veteran? Yes, no, sir. And Dan? My son is a veteran. Your son is? Okay. And Dan's a veteran? You know, we give you thanks today for your service, for, for, for honoring and, and doing what was right. I was never in the service. I um, had visions of going to the Navy when I was, uh, when I was younger. But uh, then Vietnam came around, and I was hoping I didn't have to go to Vietnam. So um, I know I was a chicken. I shouldn't have done it that way. But uh, since I didn't have to, I didn't go. Um, and instead, I, I chose to stay home and uh, find myself a wife and start a family. So Memorial Day is not a Christian holiday, but I wanna, want us to think about this today and how much it really means to us. This day helps us in thanking God for the freedom we enjoy as a result of the extreme sacrifice made by so many of the American sons and daughters for the sake of freedom. Sister Linda? Oh, Pastor Bill, I don't know if this is the right time, but. <clears throat> I went to a funeral yesterday for my brother-in-law who was in the Navy. And in the last seven weeks, we've lost five people from our family. And in my own family, my husband, my children's father, Ron, was in the Air Force. And I have a son in the Air Force who was in the Air Force, and a son who was in the Navy, and a son who's a policeman. But right now, I have a granddaughter. She's on the USS Eisenhower in the Persian Gulf. And Names like Bahrain and Qatar are very, very familiar to me. So if you 
We think of it during this week. Please pray for Jessica Stamba in the Persian Gulf. Thank you. Amen. Amen. We're going to have a special prayer at the end of service anyway for our service people. So, you know, there's, unless you know people, it doesn't affect you that much. I have a picture of my brother when he's in Korea. I was just a little kid, and um, he was in Korea, and I don't think he saw a whole lot of battle or anything, because he never, he never talks about it. But I see that we're across that picture every once in a while, and it reminds me of that he actually went to service. And he could have, you know, my mom was really worried about him, my mom was afraid that something was going to happen to him, but, you know, God protected him. Amen? Amen. I feel that sometimes in America, we have lost our way. Instead of giving tribute to our forefathers for the good they did, people just want to judge them by our standards today and concentrate on the bad. Some have just lost respect for their sacrifice. I even see this in the church world. It seems like sometimes so many people have lost respect for God. You know, back in the 80s and 90s, we were so much in, in showing God's grace. And that's a great thing, because God's grace is what brings us to the cross. God's grace and His mercy is what... what what saved our souls. Amen. But you know, when I was growing up, God was exalted. God needed our respect. And what we did is we took Jesus down here and made him our best friend. And that's good. Except for the fact when we did that, we lost that respect for God. We need to get that back in our church. We need to get that back in our young people. I looked at all the the riots and the, and the things that were going on on campuses this past couple weeks, past few weeks, and I think, my, 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 how do these people not know what Israel means to this world? How do people not know what Israel means to God? How can people just be that way? Joshua 4, 1 through 9 says, came to pass when all the people were clinging past over Jordan, the Lord spake unto Joshua, saying, Take you twelve men out of the people, out of every tribe a man. And command you them, saying, Take you hence out of the midst of Jordan, out of the place where the priest's feet stood firm, twelve stones. You shall carry them over with you, and leave them in the lodging place where you shall lodge this night. Then Joshua called the twelve men whom he had, who he had prepared for the children of Israel, out of every tribe a man. And Joshua said unto them, Pass over before the ark of the Lord your God into the midst of Jordan, and take up your take you up every man of you a stone upon his shoulder, according to the number of the tribes of the children of Israel, that this may be a sign among you, that when your children ask their father the time to come, saying, What means this by these stones? That you shall answer them, and the waters of Jordan were cut off before the ark of the covenant of the Lord. When it passed over Jordan, the waters of Jordan were cut off, and the stones shall be for memorial unto the children of Israel forever. And the children of Israel did so as Joshua commanded, and took up the twelve stones out of the midst of Jordan, and as the Lord spoke unto Joshua, according to the number of the tribes of the children of Israel, he carried them over with them unto the place where they lodged, and laid them down there. And Joshua set up the twelve stones in the midst of Jordan, the place where the feet of the priests, which bear the ark of the covenant, stood. And, there, uh, and they are there unto this day. I like that. Let it be a sign among you that when your children ask, what does it mean? I think our problem in our, our society today is our children don't ask. They don't ask why we go to church. They don't ask why we believe the way we do. They just think, ah, oh, mom and dad, they're just old-fashioned people. They think grandma and grandpa, you know, that's what they like to do because they're old people. Uh, you know, and they, uh, and they just, uh, you know, they don't, they don't see the deep seated of faith that we have. They don't even see the deep seated of things of, of, of this country, such as memorials and, and the people that died for this country. Even though it isn't always a popular concept today, we need memorials and we need to remember these milestones in the world, in our country, in our church, our family, and in ourselves. We need to remember that the freedom we have in this country was paid for with the price of our military. So many made that ultimate sacrifice. We also need to remember the sacrifice of Christ made on the cross for our salvation. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Romans 5, 6 to 10 says, For when they were yet, yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet preadventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commanded his love towards us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath through him. For if when we were, we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of the Son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Back before I became a Christian, Christ died for me. Because he could see in the future, and he knew the people that were going to follow him. Ephesians 5, 1 through why don't you say, be therefore followers of God as their children, and walk in love as Christ also has loved us and has given himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling Savior. Whenever I think about sacrifice, I think about Adam, who is willing to sacrifice his son on the altar, Isaac. I think about Job, that when he lost everything, he still would not curse God. He would still not give up. But God stayed steadfast, but he, but he stayed steadfast in his faith. And God restored those things. I think about when I had walked out on God. I had backslidden. And I think about, about my friend, Brother Randy Wooden, who came to preach at Dalton. And since it was Randy, I came. And I remember him praying over me. He said, Lord, Restore the years to locust data. Thank you, Jesus. And it's like, he did that. He set my feet upon a solid rock, gave me positions in the church, let me use my talent for him. My goodness, God's a good God. And then there's the disciples that gave up everything to follow Christ. They sacrificed their lives to follow Christ. John 15, 7-13 it says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. Love and joy perfected. As the Father loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. If you know, if you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have have spoken to you that my joy may remain in you, that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love is no man than this, than to lay down his life for his friends. Christ is talking about people laying down their lives for their friends. And when we go to Memorial Day, we think about the, the, the soldiers that lay down their lives for us. This flag we pledge allegiance to today. It's not just a, just a piece of cloth. It means something. From the time I was a little kid, I was taught this flag means something. It means life. It means liberty. It means freedom. And it wasn't just a piece of cloth that I put together. It was people that bled and died to give us this flag, to give us this flag, this liberty, this freedom. The same as Christ gave us life and liberty and freedom. And he gave his life. God gave his only begotten son for us that we might be free in him. I am so thankful that we as Americans can, can, can come to church and worship our God. Yeah. There's lots of countries you can't do that in. But our forefathers, our brothers, our sisters, they died that we could honor that flag and we could kneel at the cross in freedom. The great thing is that victory is coming to those who believe, just like those that paid the price in wars help bring peace and democracy to the United States, we as believers will have peace evermore with Christ. 
Isaiah 6, 1-3 says, In the year King Isaiah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon the throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. And above it stood the seraphims, each one had six wings. With two he covered his face, with two he covered his feet, and with two he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of glory. I like to open the eyes of my heart because I feel when we sing that song, you can almost see the angels as Christ is opening that for us saying, holy, holy, holy. That song means so much to me because I just love that. We're getting ready to sing a new song around here, um, Holy Forever. And it's the same thing. God is holy, folks. We must not take it lightly. I'm in this church this morning, and I know everybody here. And I know what your lives are, and I know they're great lives. There's people I've looked up to in this church since I became a Christian. Because you guys know that God is holy. You guys have practiced the faith and shown me the way. Given me encouragement when I've been down, Touched my life in so many ways. Revelations 4, 1 to 9, 1 through 9 says, After this, I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. The first voice which I heard, as it was of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show you things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne, and he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardison stone. And there was a rainbow round about the throne, in sight like no man, like, like unto an emerald. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats. And upon those seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment. Mm. They had on their heads crowns of gold. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices. And there was seven lamps of fire burning before the throne which are the seven spirits of God. Before the throne there was a sea of glass, like on a crystal. And in the midst of the throne, and round about the throne, were four beasts, full of eyes before and behind. The first beast was like a lion, the second beast like a calf, the third beast had a face as a man, the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. And the four beasts had each of them six wings about them. Sound familiar? Um, and, and they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which is and was and is to come. And those beasts gave glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne, who liveth forever and ever. I can't wait to be part of the people that see these seraphims giving honor to God, singing holy, 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 holy. Mm. It's a victory. Revelations 21, 1 through 7 says, I saw a new heaven, and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first passed away. And there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city New Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven prepares a bride adorned for her husband. And I had heard a great voice in heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them. They shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain for the former things have passed away. And he just sat upon the throne and said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is, a, that is a thirst of the fountain of water of life free. He that overcomes shall inherit all things. I will be his God, and she, he shall be my son. I think about those words. Think about 
no more pain. I'm going on, well, <laughs> I'm getting old. <laughs> and for like three years since COVID, I had to work from home. Sat in my chair and sat there for all these times and I got fatter <laughs> and lazier. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, I started working at a, at a hospital back in January. And now if I don't walk 6,000 steps a day, I feel like I've been lazy. There's been weeks I've, I've there's been weeks I've, I've hit seven, eight. Last week I hit one day with uh, almost eleven thousand steps. Oh, wow. I praise yeah. God for that. Amen. Amen. And usually, if I would do the six thousand steps, I would come home and for the next two days I'd be, oh Carol, give me something to drink. Carol, make some food. For Carol, I'm sore. Carol, I hurt. And now I do six thousand steps, seven thousand steps. And I'm up the next day. Amen. Well, usually, you spook me down for like two or three days. And I praise God for that. Because, because I've worked those muscles. Folks, we need to work those muscles in our lives, in our prayer life. We need to pray more. We need to search the word more. We need to share the gospel more. We need to let people know that Christ died for our sins. Think about those tears we've gone. You know, this past week we've uh, had a dog around the house since Sarah was in probably right out of high school. Actually, Sarah's dog, but we've always claimed her. She's lived with, with us more than she lived with Sarah. And uh, they had to put her down this week. She um, was getting cancer and she had a tumor that busted one of the legs in her, one of the bones in her legs. And they said, you know, there wasn't a whole lot they could do for her, take her out of pain and stuff like that, but that was it. And it's rough. Mm -hmm. You know, I know she's just a dog, but it's rough. All the little things we used to do for her, and then, you know, we used to come home, run home from, from, you know, I'd get home from work and I'd go check on her. Because she was back in the bedroom because she and my other dog got in a big fight one time. You know, it wasn't a very nice fight, so we kept her in our bedroom, which has an outside door. But I second, you know, I get home from work, I still want her back to her. At nighttime, I would go to the bedroom and go to bed, and I would feed her, mm -hmm. let her out, and when she'd come back in, she'd want her treats, and she'd sit there on the side of the bed until I gave her treats. And I still expect to go in the room and find her, want her treats. And I cried. I have to tell you, I did cry. But one of these days, this will be no more pain, no more sorrow, no more tears, because we have the victory. The sacrifice that Christ made on the cross is going to give us the victory as believers. The sacrifice that men and women made on foreign soil is what gives us the victory in the United States. People, we need to teach our kids, and our grandkids, and our great-grandkids how important this is. They get so much garbage from all over the place, from everybody else, from school, from friends. We need to make sure they know what's going on. We need to make sure that they know that God established Israel. That the Israelites are God's chosen people. Amen. And if we treat Israel bad, God's going to treat us bad. They need to know these things. They need to know that Jesus Christ died for them. No matter who they are, no matter what kind of trouble they're in, no matter how far they fall away, Jesus Christ died for them. He gave us the victory through Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Brother Sotero, I know that you have a son in the service. I wonder if you'd say a special prayer over our servicemen. Lord, we just thank you for our service men from our the armed forces. And we just thank you, Lord, for what you've done for our country, Lord. Serving our country, Lord, standing up for our freedom, yes. for our rights. And that we as Americans here don't take for granted our liberties and freedoms that we have. Mm -hmm. Especially freedom of religion. Yes. 
because so many other countries don't have these leaders. So I just pray that, that we all, the church, body of Christ, realize that and keep in prayers all our servicemen and women that are serving our great nation and, and their families, Lord. And we give you all praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This is a great nation. God has done great things for this country. This nation is founded on biblical Christian principles. Amen. We must never ever forget that. Amen. Would you stay with me today? Father, I come to you today, Lord, thanking you for the sacrifice of your Son, Jesus Christ. I thank you, O oh God, for the finished work upon that cross that saved our souls. I thank you, God, that we can come here in freedom and worship you in spirit and in truth. I thank you, God, that you keep your hand upon each and every one of us. I pray this morning, Lord, that God, you'll touch our hearts. Father, let us not just take Memorial Day as just another holiday to have a good time, but let us take it as a time to reflect on both what, what the soldiers have given up and, Father, what you gave up. Pray, O oh God, that you just pour out your blessings upon us, Lord. God, keep us safe. Keep our pastor and those traveling home, Lord. Keep them safe as they travel. Father, touch any affliction that, that may be happening right now. We pray, O oh God, that you keep up, keep our soldiers safe over there in Gaza, Lord, and all over the all over the world, oh God. Keep them safe. Bring them back home, O oh God. Father, let us just feel your freedom, feel your victory. We ask it all in Jesus' precious name. Amen. All hearts clear. Amen. Anybody want to say anything? Nope. You're dismissed.